I don't know what what story am I going to tell today? Is is it this the the very first story with light and darkness? I no no that what today is this this one with the with the holy family and the, the shepherds and the sheep and no I or, or maybe maybe it would be this one. This looks quite fancy and old. Yeah, and a bit gold is it, it might be a worth a lot, but I, we won't open this one today. Today, uh, we need the desert bag. Uh, This is my desert bag. You know, a lot of very important and wonderful things happened in the desert. So we need to know what it's like. The desert is a dangerous place. It's always on the move. Very difficult to know where you are. Ve there's very little water in the desert. So if you don't find any water, you might simply die. And no not very much grows in the desert. So there's very little to eat as well. When the wind blows, the sand stings you in the face. And when the sun heats up, it scorches your skin. In the night, it's cold. So people wear a lot of clothes. clothes to protect them from the heat, from the cold, and from the sand. After the great flood, the creatures went out to the, all the four corners of the world, earth and brought life to the whole world. People gathered in villages and later in cities. One of the most ancient and greatest of cities was the city of Ur. In Ur, the people believed in many gods. There was a god for the sky, a god for the sun, there was a god for the earth and the ground, a god for the tree. The world was alive with gods. But there was one family that believed that God was everywhere. The whole of God was everywhere. They didn't know it, but that's what they believed. Abraham was part of that family, and Sarai <coughs> was part of that family. When it was time to move, they went along with all their cattle and sheep and all their helpers, even the children and the old ones came along. It was a long journey. 
in the night. They slept in their tents. And in the day, they followed the great river Euphrat, which gave water to them and all the animals. It was a long and hard journey. Finally, they saw some people coming out, out from Haran, and now they knew that they were almost there. Sometimes, Abram went out to the edge of the desert and looked out over the desert and into the sky. And one time, when Abram went out to the edge of the desert, God came so near to Abram, and Abram so near to God, that Abram knew what God wanted him to do. God said to Abram, I will make you a great family. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. Abram and Sarai did what God said to them. This time, they didn't follow any river, but went west from Karen, from Haran. <sighs> Finally, they came to a place called Sikhem. At Sikhem, Abram went up to the hill and prayed to God, and God was there. So Abraham built an altar in that praise because God was there. Abraham and Sarai moved on. And they come near to a place called Beetle. Again, Abram prayed to God, and God was there. So Abram built another altar, altar there. Now he knew that God was not just here and there. God was fully everywhere. Abram and Sarah moved on and pitched their tent near the oaks of Mamre. One night, God called Abraham, and Abraham, Abraham came out and looked over the desert and into the stars in the heaven. And God came close to Abraham. And Abraham came so close to God that he knew what God said. God said to Abraham, you will be a father. And Sarai, will be a mother. You will be a great family. As many as there are stars in heaven and grains of sand in the desert. <laughs> Abraham laughed. He was very old. And Sarah too. God's promise 
sounded almost impossible. Later, three men came from the desert. Abraham sat by his tent and invited them inside. Sarai made bread out of three meshes of flour. flour. That's a lot. She served them bread and meat and milk and water at his custom. The men said, you will have a son. Sarah, who was standing by and listened, laughed. Both her and Abram was very old. And the men went away. But do you know what happened? A year later, Abram and Sarah got a son. Now they laughed again, and they called the son laughter. In their language, laughter is Isaac. When God spoke to Abram, he actually gave them new names. He was no longer to be called Abram, but Abraham, and Sarai should be called Sarah. When Isaac grew older and stronger, Sarah grew older, and Sarah died old and tired, and they buried her in a cave near the oaks of Mamwa. Abraham was lonely. He missed Sarah very much, but he knew there was one thing he had to do. He sent his most trusted servant back to where he came from to find a wife for Isaac. The servant stopped by a well in the evening and there he met Rebecca. She was as courageous as she was kind, she gave him water and water for all his animals. She invited him home to her family. Abram's helper told about Abraham and Sarah and the great family And Rebecca, when she heard the story, she wanted to be part of the great family. So they went out in the desert together. They passed Sikhem. And they caught a nearby beetle. Isaac saw them coming and went out to meet them. Isaac and Rebecca got married. Now Abraham was an old man too, and he died. Isaac and Rebekah buried her, him next to Sarah.
Isaac and Rebekah got children. And their children got children. And that, that came, kept on going until your grandparents got your parents. And until your parents got you. And that way, we are part of the great family that is as numerous as the grains of sand in the desert and stars in the sky. Now, I wonder, and I would like to wonder this story together with you, children and adults, and uh, maybe we could have a mic around as well. What part of the story do you like the best? Yeah, what part of the story do you like the best? Speak louder, I can't hear it all the way up here. Oh, all of it. You like the whole story? Hmm? Yeah. What part do you like the best? difficult, isn't it? <coughs> you are allowed to talk back to me. Mm. Yeah. Like the feet. You Only. like the whole of it also? Yeah. Mm. So all the way they went from Ua to, to Heron and to all the way around, you like the whole story? Mm. Yeah. What about the adults? Which part of the story do you like the best? I like the part about the promise. The promise to the elderly couple and the child that came. So you like when Abraham came close to God and he promised him to be a big family? Yes, and God was faithful. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that part too. <laughs> it's a tough dog running around with a mic. Um, I like the part where Rebecca, <coughs> Rebecca accepts to go and to be a part of this family. Just leave mm -hmm. her own family and everything and go follow. Because this is also a part of the promise. Mm -hmm. I mean, he promised that there will be a big family and mm -hmm. so. God give son mm. and give the wife of the son. Yeah, so you like when, when they met and became part of the big family and part of the promise, mm -mm. which we are also part of. Yeah, I like the romantic part as well. Yeah. Hmm. Now comes a tougher question. Which part of the story is the most important one. I wonder which part is the most important one? Hmm. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> the, the, the whole part of it is the most important one. Okay. Nothing. Nothing. We can't leave anything. Yeah. Rebecca. Rebecca. You think that she's the important one. She, th that's the important part of the story where, where she comes over here and goes into the desert to become part of the, family, the great family because she's mother and gives children. Yeah, That's a very important part. Otherwise, it would have stopped with Abraham and Sarah, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I think the most important part is having hmm? faith. Is having faith in God because if it wasn't for God, Abraham, this story would, this the way um, the story went wouldn't have happened. Mm, yeah. So, so where God met Abraham, that that was the beginning of the story. Yeah, and the rest wouldn't have happened if God didn't come close to him. Yeah. Now, we need to get a little bit personal. Which part of this story 
is about you? Or which part of the story is your story? Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, Sarah love mm? because uh, he, she, she think that she cannot bear a son because of her age mm. and uh, because of unbelief. Like us, also, we have unbelief. I think yeah. we can refer, our can relate ourselves to Sarai. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, for me, I think the part where he moved from the water source, which mm. is where there's life, yeah. uh, which is um, something physical, to the moment whereby you start journeying to the West, whereby you don't know what's going to happen in the future, yeah. but because of faith, that will keep you moving. Mm. That's part of the story. So even when we are walking, we don't know always where we are going and what's going to happen next. So that way, our story is similar to this story. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I have several over here. I think uh, we, we all here in this church right now, we can uh, at one point relate ourselves to Rebecca mm -hmm. because uh, look at ourselves, like we come from different countries, <coughs> but we are here. Mm. At this moment in this church, praising the Lord, mm. we left everything that was behind us, but with faith, we know that wherever we go, we mm. will settle, we'll bring fruits, and we, with the faith that we've been raised up, mm. we hope that those fruits will bear fruits. Mm. Like, we have children now, and we are trying to bring them Christian life, and mm. we hope that in the, in the end, they'll also like bring their children like Rebecca did. Mm. So, no matter where we come from in the world or in this little country, we can always be part of the great family and the story of God. Yeah. Uh, for me, where Abraham realized that God is everywhere. So, same as with us, like everywhere we go, God is with us. He sees our, all our sorrows and happiness, and in, in that way, because of our faith, we also see God. Mm. So the faith of Abraham and his story can be part of our story as well. Mm. Yeah, Robert. And, and Isaac's name means laughter, mm. which kind of tells me God has a sense of humor. Yeah, so, so you find yourself part of the laughing part of the story. Yeah, sometimes God's ways, they don't make sense. They, mm. They're just yeah. funny. And sometimes we laugh of the ways of God. Mm. We can't imagine how it can be fulfilled. Yeah. Mm. Now comes the biggest question. Which part can we leave out and still have the whole story now we have to let the imagination run wild. Are there any part of the story we can take away and we still have it? Yeah, yeah. Anything we can leave out? I know it's a holy story and it's a great story of the great family of Abraham and Sarah but there must be something we can leave out. Come on, help me. Hmm. No one dares. Hmm. Okay, then I will start. I think we can maybe leave this one out. They didn't follow that river, so that's just another one. We only need Euphrat. That was the one that gave them water, yeah. Hmm. Anything else we can leave out? <laughs> yeah, over here. I don't know if it would make sense, but uh, like uh, those, the visitors that they came to them, mm. of course, uh, Sarah and uh, Abra, they, they had the faith 
but they really didn't believe that it would happen. Mm. So of course, like the visas came just to confirm. Yeah. But we could also let that out because it happened eventually. <laughs> so the t the three men from the desert, we can leave them out some way. We for, I didn't even have men for them, so for it was me, just my fingers. For, yeah. For and they had, they got the happened. promise anyway. It happened yeah. anyway. It happened anyway. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I move my fingers away, the ones from the... Yeah. Anything else? The hotel? Mm. The, the hotel, I mean... The hotel? Yes, yeah, because we could move one God of, is everywhere. Both of them, or one of them? Uh, I, I don't know, but God is everywhere, and this was here to significant the presence of God. But yeah? God is everywhere, so... Mm -hmm. So, Abraham knew that God was here, and not just here and there, so we can leave one or both of the altars. <coughs> and uh, yeah, anything else? Hmm. I will come with one. Oh, yeah, you have one. Which one? No, oh, here. Sometimes we leave these ones out. It's not easy to talk about the dead ones, our feelings, our loss. Sometimes we forget about those ones and don't talk about our feelings for it. But they were an important part of the story as well, although they are dead now and buried. Yeah, sometimes we, we leave parts out. So. We have a little bit of the story left. I'm not sure Abraham, Abraham and Sarai would know which way to go if we don't have the altars. And that God would be everywhere, fully present. But we have at least a bit of the story. Sometimes we use the Bible that way. We pick and choose and find the things that we best like. And sometimes we end up destroying the whole story because we just take the part that we like. So sometimes we need to assemble the story again, get the altars back, the visual places where we meet God, and the physical places on the earth where we've been or talked to God. So let me put Abraham and Rebecca, oh, Sarah, and Isaac and Rebecca, and the altars, and the cities, and the rivers, back in the basket, and the desert back. The desert is a heavy place also. Now we put it back here. And now you know, when you go up here, you can always find the desert back and find the story.